Let's to remain standing just a moment for prayer. We bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, to Thee we give praise for all that our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. And we thank Thee, Lord, because that today we know that Thou art the same great Jehovah God that always has been and You ever will. We thank Thee for Jesus Christ who made it possible that we could be back into divine fellowship with Thee again through the shedding of His innocent blood, that through the, the propitiation of that blood we now are sons and daughters of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be at the end, but we know we will be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And Father, that's all sufficient for us as long as we're like Him, standing in the form of His image. And now, Father, we do not want to be at this hour conformed to the things of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of, of our spirit, by the Holy Ghost, that He might come and take our lives into His own care and would, would lead us and guide us for what days we have left upon the earth to magnify His great name. We thank Thee for all these things, and with expectations we look for Your visit with us tonight as we've gathered Amen. in now and believing that you'll meet with us as you promised in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 I believe it was David that said, I was happy when they said unto us, said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And we are very grateful indeed to be here tonight and feel it a privilege to have this grand opportunity to, uh, to uh, be here speaking with you people. I'm making some tapes, so I'm just looking back into the room to see if the brethren were getting the tapes. It's, uh, it's all now. The tapes are going. All right. This purpose for this is uh, I promised that sending out messages would come be uh, taped here at the tabernacle. Now, we are... I'd like to say... Uh, something about this morning. Uh, uh, today, right after noon, rather, when we was ending the, the morning meeting, something taking place that maybe some of you wasn't here and didn't hear about it. I was uh, closing service, and I'm uh, speaking from the platform here, watching a brother uh, standing out here, shaking hands with the people by the name of Brother Wade, we call him here. His wife is a fine registered nurse. And Brother Way is uh, uh, one of God's servants, and he uh, also works in secular work, but has a call upon his heart for years to the field of mission work. Felt led that God should bring him here and wait at this post here until receiving further orders for uh, to advance into the field. A few days ago, speaking to him, and having a little interview with him and his wife. And uh, this morning, by making my confession of having complex, uh, I referred to Brother Way also as having a complex, which is certainly normal among all people. And at the, a moment after that, Brother Way was stricken in a heart attack and dropped dead in the floor. And um, I've seen his wife, and I noticed I've been around many people dying, and I I do not have to to say this. Uh, I like to brag on Jesus Christ and His power, but at this time I think we should never try to brag on Him in any way that something He He, he didn't do. But I've seen Jesus Christ raise up the dead many times infallible doctors testing to prove. For instance, in Connecticut just recently in a meeting, setting a large, the old, some kind of a famous auditorium, there was a Dr. Barton, a Christian doctor, on the platform with me, a medical doctor, and there was a fine, renowned Christian woman, a lovely, wealthy woman she was. She was sitting kind of to my left, and I called the prayer line, and I noticed the woman just all at once 
when anyone, their heart stops, you can close your eyes, but when you are shocked to death, when your heart stops, really, your eyeballs turn back, and the white part of your eye pushes out. And I noticed it as she sank down. And uh, uh, quickly they called for the medical doctor, and he run to her to take her pulse and shut his head, put his hand up on her, his ear to her heart, and she was gone. She sank in the floor, and her daughter screaming, which interrupted the meeting. I continued on because I didn't have no word of the Lord for the woman. And I continued on. They said something about getting Brother Branham, and they said, we're going to call him in the prayer line because he's under discernment. And they said, get little Branham. That was Billy. And Billy, being it was a woman dead, he didn't want to... You know, people get the suspicion of somebody being dead. That, that, that's just a hull. There's nothing there that uh, people think strange. That, the person isn't there themselves. They've moved on. And uh, so he was afraid to, to go around the woman because she was dead. And then immediately the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I turned from the place, walked down the steps, come around to where she was, and just as I started to where she was, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I said, Mary! She said, Yes, Brother Brown. She was alive. Hallelujah. And, uh, and uh, she had never seen this before. And it was the first in many. Then at Shawano just recently, and uh, oh, I say last, about four years ago or five, I was speaking one night at the armory. And there was a great crowd of people, and an elderly man of some 80 years old, I guess, and his lovely wife, they were Lutheran by faith, go to a great famous Lutheran church there, I forget the name of it now, it's the largest Lutheran gathering in America, at one single gathering of church membership. And um, it's a great country for the Lutherans. And while I was speaking, I noticed the fellow's head going back like that, and his hands went out, and he pitched forward dead in the chair. And his wife began screaming, and she screamed out, Somebody help me! Somebody help me! And I, looked, I said, Just everyone keep seated. Be quiet. And I waited for the Lord to give me a word. And, and I, Satan, I just fixed to make the altar call, and that's just when he wants to show himself. So did you ever notice when you start to make an altar call, even little babies just start screaming and things like that? That's Satan. <coughs> we were spiritual understand. So the Lord gave me his name and I called him and he come to life just like that. And this morning when I was turned, see, and I've seen many times the Lord Jesus bring back the dead. The little baby in Mexico died at nine o'clock that morning and this was between ten and eleven that night. It come back to life. And um, and that's a bona fide testimony with doctors witness of it, see. If the baby died in his office at 9 o'clock that morning, I think it was pneumonia, and the baby's living today, so far as I know. And that was before, oh my, 30, 40,000 people. And then, this morning, I seen our brother Wade, as he's sitting, he's sitting right here now, but as he's sitting right along in here somewhere, he was standing and we were singing, and uh, glory, glory, hallelujah, and shaking one of those hands. I noticed him as it struck him, and his head went back. He, uh, Brother Way isn't given things like anything like a fainting or going like that. And he, I seen him fall backwards, and I seen his wife, which is a registered nurse, check his pulse, and she screamed. It was gone. And and then I uh, believe it was Sister Nash, a lady here, a colored sister that comes to the church. Some of them started running forward, and I. She, Miss Way kept reaching for me to come across the platform, and I said, everybody keep quiet, keep in your seat, don't never be excited in them kind of times, see, that's what Satan wants to do, just wait and see what he says. If it's somebody moving on to glory, well, we got to go sometime, no better place than in church, so, so then right into the house of the Lord. So then, but the man was turning back. I thought maybe something had, had fainted or something had happened to him in that manner. But when I looked and his head turned around this way and seeing the inside down part of his eyes pushed out. You can't sh you can't put your eyes in that condition. It's the heart stopping that does that. And I went across this, and he there's someone, a kind person, had laid a something for his head to lay on, and there was his feet, hands, and everything stiff. 
it stopped. His face was as dark as my coat, reddish black, and his eyes turned back. And I know heart attacks. Uh, I know what they do, how they turn. Anybody else has ever seen him. So I put my hand up on his pulse, and there's no more pulse than there is on this desk. No. Not a thing. Here's his wife, a registered nurse, who checked his pulse. There was no pulse there. Then the other day, while I was with Brother Way on a discernment in here, I seen that he had a murmuring heart anyhow. So then I thought, this is it. So I laid my hands up on him. I said, Dear God, I call in the name of Jesus Christ, the soul of my brother, his life back again. And the Lord Jehovah knows his Bible here before me. It felt like when I had my hand on his pulse, and as I know I'll answer for this at the day of the judgment, if it be wrong, and it felt like his pulse beat four or five times quickly, went pum, 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 and then started off going pum, pum, pum. And he was trying to open his mouth to say something to me, and uh, trying to get his mouth in gurgling kind to try to say it, and he got out the word, Brother Branham. Then it looked like he would go back to sleep or something. And I waited just a moment again, checked his pulse again, it was beating normally. And then again, I looked, and he looked over at me, and he was kind of, I seen beside himself, he didn't know where he was at, but his heart beating normal. And God had called back his life to him again. So I, I say that in honor of Jesus Christ, who it is the same God that when this morning I preached at length, way over my time, and tired and worn, and there could be two things. He either got tired or when I spoke of having a complex, not this, uh, uh, to mess my brother up, as we said, because I, had, I was making my confession of having complex, and I guess if I ask tonight in this audience of people, how many in your nose you have complex, practically every hand would go up. That you might know, Brother Wade, just let me show you where this is German. Now, how many knows that you got a complex? Raise your hand. Look at there. See? But, uh, I don't know if that shock of me saying that to Brother Way, taking it like I might be rebuking him or something, then it, uh, uh, he fell into this condition and the Lord Jesus brought him back. Now, uh, I am think that the same God that the great St. Paul represented in his days, that when he preached at length one night and a man fell and his life was gone out of him, and Paul, getting over the man, by the grace of God, said back to the audience, his life is within him. I, I think that it proves to us, or if you've never seen it before, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, Amen. today, and forever. Amen. And then it might have been this, that I've tried to think of it this afternoon, that I have stood here and with all my heart told you exactly the truth and tell you of my complex and make my open confession call and ask you to pray that my inside being would be changed towards the people that I could do as the Lord did and to confirm that he still was standing to the field. He let that happen to show that he still healed the sick and raised up the dead. And I think it was no more than a confirmation of what I've been preaching about and have been witnessing of the kingdom of God. And that's something along the line that he had just told Brother Roberson there and uh, another one of the brethren. Now, we love him for that. And we're thankful tonight that Brother Way is with us tonight. And surely God is not finished with our brother or he'd have went on this morning, there's something for Brother Way to do. And I want you to know, Brother Way, that this entire church, with myself, will be praying that God will show you his plan for your and your wife's life, and as soon as it is materialized, will place you in the, I'm sure he'll do it, Brother Way. And all of us as Christians will be thankful for Brother Way. Is that right, church? Amen. And I'll pray that he and Sister Way will find their place in the Lord. 
uh, for their service in life. Now, uh, also, uh, I wanted to speak to Brother Way. I come early so I could speak to him and find just what his attitude or what happened, and he doesn't know. See, it just went out, and he just dropped and went off, that's all. Brother Way was wanting and asked if there is anybody in the building that's going down to uh, Arkansas Tuesday or whenever you're going to uh, to this meeting. Now, it's, um, it's perhaps a very small meeting. It's a brotherhood that meets, and I think it's up in some kind of a jungle or something or another, way up, and they probably will not be too many people, uh, I guess, at the meeting because, frankly, they don't even know I'm coming yet. <laughs> and so my friends around there will probably be a night or two before they'll know, even my friends in Arkansas that know me down in there will be at the meeting. But if anybody's going and would have room to let someone ride with them, Brother Way would be glad to do it. He said to make the announcement that he would be no burden upon the people to take care of him while he was there because he could do it. But he, if someone was going, it would be a sign to him that God would love for him or would be in the, be in the will of God for him to go down. So all of you know Brother Wade sitting here at the corner. And if anybody would want to, uh, is going down and has a room for an extra passenger, he'd be glad to do it. And then next Sunday night, the Lord willing, I'll, I'll be back for next Sunday morning. And... And uh, if Brother Neville has the Sunday school, and when it's over, I want to make another tape, if I can. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I'll be speaking on, does your life, uh, is your life worthy of the gospel? That, that, or is your life, life worthy of the gospel? That's what I mean to say. And is your life worthy of the gospel? And I want to make a tape on that, if the Lord willing. And now... Tonight, I have uh, uh, announced today that I was going to make the tape, and a pastor, I don't think he even preached, just no. called me out. And so, uh, to speak uh, here at the platform. Now, then I don't know, now, if in making the tapes, if you seem to get tired or something, you wish to go out, just be quite as possible, because we don't see these these microphones are very, very sensitive, and they pick up a little noise, and we're making, trying to make these tapes for an international ministry. And tonight, I wish to announce my subject as, uh, after I, I read uh, God's Word found in St. Matthew's Gospel, the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. The 24th chapter, and let's begin now at the 32nd verse and read the scripture. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branches is yet tender and put a forth leaves. You know that summer is not. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things shall be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of the day and of the hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but the Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, in our reading we find tonight, as we read, that the first part of this chapter reads that the disciples called him apart upon the mount, mountain and said to him, What will be the sign of the end of the world? What will be the sign of your coming? And when will there come a time there won't be one stone left on the other on the temple? Now, he goes on to answer. See, here at the first verse, Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him 
to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And his disciple, and as he said upon the mount, pardon me, as he said upon the mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world. See, they ask three questions. And he answers back three questions. When will there come a time there won't be one stone left on another? What's the sign of your coming? And what about the end of the world? And many, I believe, that we brethren make mistakes by trying to apply it all to his coming. But he's answering three different questions that was asked him. Why will it be the time that there won't be one of these stones left on another? When will this thing be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And what will be at the end of the world? See, three different questions, and he starts off answering one about when the stones will be left, not one upon another, and then after he finishes that question, then he starts off with the sign of his coming, and then goes into the end of the world. Now, we notice here one of the things that I wish to speak on tonight is the, the flashing red light of the sign of his coming. And we're going to dwell tonight upon the days of Noah. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. And uh, this struck me the other day, and I thought maybe I'd try to tape this and uh, speak on this and writing down several scriptures here that I would like to refer to maybe and, and read in a little bit. But now, our Lord Jesus was asked this question and he gave them the sign of his coming. And then immediately he said this, heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And then he said, learn a parable of the fig tree when it's putting forth its branches you know that summer's nigh, so when you see these things coming to pass or being made manifest, know that the time is at hand, and this generation shall not be done away until all these things shall come to pass. What generation? The generation that's seen the apostasy that we're going to speak of tonight. So when we think of uh, my text as a flashing red light of his coming, it reminds me of waiting at a railroad station. And when a man or people stand around, as many of us has, when we're waiting to catch the train, and we can't hear the train, or you don't see him, but you know it's it's time, maybe the dispatcher says he's a, a little late. He's not exactly at the time, but we don't know just when, but he will uh, arrive soon. And we'll walk around in the stations with our hands in our pockets and sitting on our suitcases and go out and buy a bag of peanuts and talk to the, somebody across the street. But all of a sudden, we see something happen. There's a noise takes place out at the track. And when we did, uh, the arm goes down and the red light begins to flash. What is that? The train is in the blocks. Though you can't hear him, though you can't see him, but yet that flashing red light and that arm down shows that he's coming in. Amen. Amen. And then if you're expecting to leave on that train, you better throw that bag of peanuts down, stop your talking, get up your suitcases and get ready or you'll be left behind. Because yeah. he's just stopping locally just for a few moments. And he'll be gone. If you still stand a chat the neighbor across the street, you'll be left behind. Yeah. How much more is it then? 
when we see a flashing signal that is in the blocks. Amen. Your old gospel train is Amen. passing by pretty soon. Yes. And as we study tonight <coughs> on this great text, flashing signal, as our Lord set up on the mountain and told him these things would take place as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now, we want to go back for a little piece and find out if we can find anything in this day that resembles the days of Noah. And then we can tell then where we are in that day that our Lord spoke of. See if we can find just any resemblance of the days of Noah. In order to do this, I think we ought to go back to the book of Genesis to the days of Noah. And if you will turn with me, if you will, in the scripture, back to Genesis, the sixth <coughs> chapter, and that's the days of the flood, and the morals and the condition of that day, Genesis, the sixth chapter. <coughs> now we want to read, see, and compare that day with this day. Notice. And it came to pass when man began to multiply upon the face of the earth. The very first word presents us with the absolutely flashing light that the day is at hand. Amen. For there has never been a time in all the history that there's ever been so many people and so quickly multiplying as we have today until it hard to get a place to stay. And uh, so many people multiplying upon earth, the science says that if it continues to multiply like it has been in 20 years, there won't even be food on the earth for the people. Reader's Digest, I believe it was, that quoted that, that there won't even be food for the people that are multiplying so fast. We can look around and see that the places that used to be wilderness has turned into cities. And yet, birth control is on its greatest rampage it ever was. I believe it was said of Chicago, I hope I don't misquote these figures, but actually registered cases, 30,000 abortion cases every 60 days in Chicago. A bunch of cases every 60 days registered. How about those who's never registered? See? Just in one big 4 million population city, what about the world? And yet the population is so crowded until it, it, they can't even uh, take care of it in India. They're trying to become, to uh, make, interrupt the human part of man and make them become sterile. That children cannot be born because of, they are in, on the increase so. 470 million at this time in India. How about China where uh, the increase is greater? Russia and the many countries of the world. When man begins to multiply upon the face of the earth. See, now we're taking back to the antiluvian uh, time. And daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of man that they were fair. And they took unto them wives all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a, a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants in the land in those days. And also after them, the sons of God came to the daughters of man, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men which were of old renown. Oh, what a, a subject that we got here. See, now, one of the first things I want you to notice that the, the sons of God saw the daughters of man that they were fair. Now, 
I don't, I'm pointing this at the whole world. But there never has been a time on the earth, as I can think only at that time, that there ever was such a, a wholesale beauty among women. And you can remember some of you elderly women and some of you people, man, that can remember back years ago that how it was seldom you found a pretty woman. But today you don't find any, but what is pretty is because that they have come to a place of all this bobbing their hair and makeup and, and all kinds of uh, sexy clothes and things. They can present themselves in such a way. And that is another thing, the hand of time has turned it back according to the scripture. And women are constantly on the increase of being pretty. I can remember when I was a little boy in school and turn and look at the little children today, the little girls coming on. And I can look, think of women when I was a young man and look at the girls today. I remember to be one popular girl. That's not been over 25 years ago. One popular girl, a pretty girl. And figure every boy wanted to go with this girl because she was the queen of the, of the group. Maybe in a whole city there'd be two or three of those women. Now the whole thing's become pretty. All of them. That's the fall fill the scripture and a red light flashing at the time is at hand. Amen. They've invented such stuff as lipstick and, and makeup that a woman that isn't so fair, she can still make herself pretty by the uh, all the face lifts and the uh, the things that they do to make themselves pretty. Amen. Max Baxter runs day and night and there's more spent on cosmetics in America in a year for to make the women pretty than there is spent at the grocery store. That's right. I forget how many billion dollars each year spent for cosmetics to fair our women. Now I'm saying nothing against that. I'm just showing you that it is a flash of red light that the time is at hand. For Jesus said himself, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. See? The same thing. Notice, when people begin to multiply, many people, the daughters of man were there, and the sons of God looked upon them and took them wives. Now, that's not my own saying. I'm reading it out of the Bible, where Jesus said for us to go back to Genesis and compare these days together, the multiplication of people and the beauty of women. Now, that's a great sign. Now, the warning, Jehovah's warning, the third verse. And the Lord said immediately after this took place, remember, the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. And Jesus was empowered with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he spoke only by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the scriptures are written by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the very one who wrote Genesis 6 told us in Matthew 24 to know when the time was now to go back to Genesis 6 and compare it. Multiplying of people upon the earth and yet the birth control and all of the things that goes on, don't even check it. It's going just the same because we're at the end time. Amen. And then notice immediately there come a time that it said the women was very fair, very pretty. And we check that with this and can prove it. Now I was looking at some pictures. Uh, long ago on their forefathers when they crossed the plains and I can't call the, the woman's name but her name was known from San Francisco to, to Boston of uh, being the most fairest woman in the land. Pearl White, I believe, was her name. Uh, many years ago she was killed by her lover, Scott Jackson. And if you see the woman's picture of being the most fairest lady of the land 
you would hardly look at her. She'd look like an antique out here on the street. Almost any woman you could catch any way you want to would be three times prettier than her. Any woman today that you'd catch just going down the street. See, it's an increase. Beauty for women. And then I wonder if our women realize this and can that's the reason I want this tape to go that that you mustn't put so, uh, we want you to be pretty but we want you to be natural we don't want you to be superficial some of these pretty women if you duck them in a wash tub a while and wash them up they might look a little different and, and dress them like they should be dressed but they 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 don't do it and you can't tell them no different and we're going to get to that after a while but this is the, the red light flash. And remember, when people begin to multiply upon the earth and the women got fair, it was that hour, it was at that time that the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with me. Amen. Amen. You see the clutch? You see the hand of God? My spirit, the daughter's a man were fair. And they took unto them wives, and he said, Then my spirit will not always strive with man. A lot of these days. Now, the fourth verse. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that the sons of God came unto the daughters of man. Or, or the daughters of man. And they bare them children... To, to them, and the same became mighty men, which were of old renown. Did you notice? It never said nothing about marriage. Notice, the sons of God came unto the daughters of man. Nothing about marriage. And if you take in the original Greek there, the word meaning, uh, 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 says, uh, I've got it wrote down here somewhere, uh, wife, taken to them wives, in the third verse, taken to them wives, in the Greek, I looked it up this afternoon, it didn't say take to them wives. It said talk to them women, not wives. Now you check it with your, with your, uh, the emphatic diglot and watch if that isn't true. Taken unto them women, not wives, they took them just as they were, free lovers, like we have today. Other words, they were lovers in that day just as they are now. They Amen. went any way they wanted to and took any woman that they could. Amen. And when the sons of God... Now, many of them says here that that was the fallen angels and so forth, and uh, them men and women, but to show that it is wrong, it's absolutely wrong. The Bible doesn't say anywhere about angels being either men or women. And besides, there's never a, a woman spoke of as being an angel in the Bible. Never. Now, if you want scriptures that, Matthew 22, 20, and so forth, you can find it. Now, that, that there is no such a thing as a woman angel. That's the reason that a woman preacher, angel, is a messenger. Amen. And it's, a, and it's a, an angel is a messenger, and there is no such... But you see, the day has changed today like it was then. Now, I've got some historical points wrote down here we wish to get to in a few minutes. Notice women uh, of that day in the days of Noah must have been the talk of the day. See, the sons of God, saith, saith son, saw the daughters of Cain. That they were beautiful. Wow. They were wicked. And they were daughters of Cain. When the sons of God saw the daughters of man, they were fair. They took unto them women. Then the sons of God fell from their estate with God and become woman chasers. Amen. And if that ain't the picture of the day, I don't know what Amen. is. Amen. That is true. Amen. Man, even look at our churches today. Look at everything you wish to. Notice it. Everywhere 
it looked in that day must have been pretty women. Man became slaves to them, says history. That man became actually slaves to the women because they were so pretty that they become slaves. They literally made shrines and worship. And this thing, they literally worship female flesh and blood. In that day, that's history. Amen. And compare that with today. It's the same thing, my brother. Amen. Men actually worship women. Why, in our own country, Mrs. Kennedy is twice thought of what the president is. Yeah. That's right. Uh, and if you always talk about a man, if he's got an attractive wife, that's it. And now they say that about the driving, you hear them say the women is the safest driver. That's wrong. Because I'll tell you why. Billy and I are crossing this United States with a first-hand condition. We put a, a little map up in our car, a little tablet, and wrote man and woman. And every time a woman made the wrong, we put a mark on her side, and a man made one, we put one on his side, and out of 300 what we call boo-boos pulled on the road, that you'd be surprised. There were 280 women to 19 men. But you know why? They don't get that in the police courts. The police won't rest the pretty girl. One out of a thousand. She'll get her telephone number. But he won't rest her. And that's just the way it's... And I don't wonder the records doesn't show it. See? Because man today is like it was in the days of Noah. They bow to the shrine of pretty women. Amen. Right. Amen. Oh, my, how it must have been awful in that day. Worship as a uh, females flashing themselves in such an attractive way. And if they were any better on doing it than in the are now, I'm glad I didn't live then. Think of, of how that they only, how the women has got to act in the same as they do now. Notice the Bible said they eat and they drink. Now that's, that's legitimate. Sure, marriage is honorable. A oh, man marry a woman, that's honorable. That's instituted of God. But when it comes to a time that man will take another man's wife or take some young woman or some woman that no matter who she is and break his marriage vow and do something that's wrong, it's sinful in the sight of God. And the Bible speaks very hardly against it. Now, notice it said that marriage, God instituted that in Eden. But he certainly condemned adultery. And these men and women in that day bypassed the laws of God and took it upon themselves and done it anyhow. Amen. Now compare that with today. Amen. Look at it. You ought to see the trains in the block. Take a good deep think of that now. As the infallible Jesus Christ said these words. See? And notice, the Bible said here, they eat and they drink, of course with their pretty women. Now when you realize that that's all right, Eating and drinking, that's one of the natural laws of life. We have to do it. But when that's all upon your mind, the day the people just become gluttons, drunk, women, drinking in the restaurants, and you go into a place where the, the uh, highballs and cocktails are served, the women out drink the man. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. In other words, they were living with the women without being married to them. Amen. And today, why it's so instituted, it, they did have a reno that you could get married and divorced and married again all the same day. But that's way out of date now. The, the husbands, so-called, and wives pack different keys to the rooms in these big cities. Now, I travel, I, I'm right in the cities and know it to be true. That the husband has his dates and the wife has her dates. Oh, it's such a conglomeration of, of rottenness. Amen. Until it's produced a bunch of, of soft, lazy, 
no good uh, hell-bound generation. A few years ago, look where man has got to in his body. Look where he's got to about the things he's done. Science is constantly trying to make a better food, hybrid corn and, and hybrid tomatoes, hybrid beef, when the stuff's no good at all. It's killing the people, Amen. and they don't realize it. Why, in a few more years, there'll be nothing but just a, a bunch like a jellyfish. Fifty years ago, ball games went on just as they do now, and you never heard of anybody getting hurt. But now they kill a dozen or two a year. A ball hit a man, he it ain't nothing in him. Hold his life in him. He's like a guinea. You hit him, he's so soft, he's dead. Bob Fitzsimmons fought a uh, carpet. I believe they fought 125 rounds one afternoon. Bare fisted. When those men with such punch in their arms to take a two before at four inches and bust that two before, with nothing but callous fists that slept with their hands in vinegar. To make their fists hard. And a, a round wasn't a little two or three minute round like we have today. They didn't have a feather bed tied over their mitts. And nobody got killed. And they thought a round was a knockdown. You had to knock the man down. And they fought 125 knockdowns. They were mad. And today they're going to have to stop the art of boxing. One with a feather bed over their arm and over their fist can't fight a two or three rounds without somebody getting killed. What's the matter? He's made up out of a bunch of, I don't know, salt, muck, hybrid, nothing till a whole generation is dying. Amen. Did not the Bible say that? If they get weaker and wiser, Amen. why in another race of people coming on me to live out of a capsule. Take a capsule for their dinner. It's nothing but a bunch of cigarette smoking, whiskey drinking, cocktail running, a bunch of dope addicts. Amen. Shots. Teenage children in school and juvenile delinquency. No wonder her mother out on the street acting the way she does throws a child into the same thing. Amen. City. Women increase. Social life broke down. Oh my, what a great thing in a day we're living in. How they do this, it's un get by with that. They won't get by with it. What are they doing? Just as they did then, they're making the commandments of God a mock. God said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But they show that they can do it Amen. and get by with it. They think they're going to get by with it, Amen. but they'll never do it. Amen. Maybe you oughtn't to come listen to this. <laughs> However, God said that this would be the time that the red light would be flashing. Amen. Jesus said so. Now, what a, a sin that they are doing and laughing at sin. Many times, the, the very thing that this Bible calls immoral, the world today calls virtue. When you take uh, your young girls and strip their clothes off of them and put them out there with little shorts on and slacks and things and walk them down the street, and they think that's virtuous, that the girl can display her female flesh when the Bible says it's sin. Amen. Horrible. But the world calls it virtue. See, they're making the commandments of God and the church says nothing about it. Amen. It's time that somebody rose in the name of righteousness, in the name of Jesus Christ, and put a stamp on this. Amen. Amen. Sometime we're going to answer for you at the day of the judgment. Amen. Now, if this sounds old and foggy to somebody, check back a few years and look what's going on now. And then imagine a future. There is no future but the coming of the Lord. Amen. Notice, check these antediluvian females with the stride of today. Check what they were. 
Check what the sons of God did. Check what they do today. I was sitting at a convention not long ago. And it broke me down almost. When all the, everybody seemed to be just enjoying a minister's talk. They were standing on the platform and I was sitting over in a corner. And there was a, a young lady come in. And she was really dressed bad. And she come walking up through this church, as the Bible says, mincing as she went. And every preacher on the platform, plus the congregation, everyone turning their head and looking, following this girl. And I thought of the scripture. The sons of God looked upon the daughters of men. Sinners. Ungodly pretty women. Oh, it's tore a many church to pieces. It took the Spirit of God away. Notice, looked upon the daughters of man. Now, remember, the infallible Jesus Christ stated these things would be this way in this day. And he said, when you see these things come to pass, then you know that the time is at the door. Now, there isn't many people who say that. There's many preachers who couldn't say that. He could if he would. But if he would, the congregation would take him out. Amen. That's exactly the truth. But here's one thing. A man's call of God, he'll stay with that Bible. I don't care what he has to do. Amen. You must remember that it's the truth. Amen. And the truth either binds or sets free. And this is exactly what Jesus Christ said. The sons of God fell because of beautiful forms and faces of the daughters of man. And that's just exactly what we got today. Same thing again. Now compare that day. Multiplication of people. The women getting fair. The sons of God falling. Marriage and giving in marriage. Divorce cases. Living in adultery. And so forth. Why, you say, Brother Branham, just a minute. I don't know. Listen, brother, just before you say something, listen to this. Jesus Christ said that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And when you see when a man walks out of his office, walks out of the church, walks out of his house, strikes the street, what do you see but a display on every side? A fresh and blood of females. Farm fitting, pretty face tempted. That's what God said would take place. When that taken place, then the time was at the door. As it was in the days of Noah, when the sons of God saw the daughters of man and began to take unto them women. See? There you are. Now watch. We find that the same thing today. We see in the history that such sex appeal they had in them until the sons of God made unto themselves shrines of women. That's just Venus and so forth. They, they, they made shrines and bowed to thee. Well, you say, Brother Random, we don't have such things as that today. You couldn't compare that with this day. I beg your pardon. I believe it's worse today than it was then. Amen. What do we see? TV. You can't even pick up a newspaper. But everything that you see is spread the female. Pretty women. On every whiskey package. In magazines. Sexy. Immoral dress. All the TV is. Everything is some sexy dressed woman. Some pretty woman. And we find out. On every on cigarettes advertisement. Everything that you can look at. You find that it's some attractive woman. You can't even see the advertisement of a pair of silk stockings unless you see some kind of a thin shaped legs going through it. That's right. Well, what is it? Why is it? I remember a man I worked for, Chris Meister, up here on the corner. Many of you remember Chris Meister. His wife, Lillian, her name was Lily, um, I think of an Elwinger. And when she 
a man come over. She's a beautiful girl. And a man wanted to get permission from her father to put her face, her picture, her profile on a box of candy. And this old German Luther stood to his feet and he said, that's an insult to me to put my daughter's picture on a box of candy to be spread across the country. What about the day when the billboards, the television, everything you see is immoral, vulgar, sexy, ungodly looking things. Right. What is it? The train, the old, sh- the old train is in her blocks now. The Bible said so. Should be coming pretty soon. We hear the sound. We talk about other things about it. But remember, this is another flash. One of the flashes is flashing before us today. Oh, we see the national condition. We see the political disturbance. We see the church situation. We preach on all that. But this is something new. If something's not very popular to be spoken on, but it must be done. Amen. Well, there's got to be a voice crying out. Remember the very words I say tonight will meet me Amen. out of the judgment. Amen. I seen this woman not long ago in the vision, the Lord showed me, see her die. That I can't ever think of that woman's name. She Marilyn Monroe. And I've never seen her. I don't go to movies. But I, I, I've seen the girl and she was attractive. And she was trying to get to something. She was dying. Had a heart attack. And the Lord said, Now you say that she died just at 4 o'clock. She did not commit suicide. said, But you can say she died at 4 o'clock. Because it's just a few seconds before 4. And there I seen where they found her. And I told Billy, I told the family, the ones that was with me about it. And a few days after it, it was Marilyn Monroe that died. Now, when I was in Canada the other day, my kids kept telling me, over a certain place where a lady let us have the house had a television. And they said, there's going to be a play called The River of No Return. That's the river I fish on all the time. And Don Smith, a friend of mine, takes that tour. Said they made a movie of it and said, Daddy, maybe that Mr. Smith is on the program. Would you like to look at it? Well, I said, when I come back from Canada, if I make it in time, I'll look at it. Well, when the play did come on, I went over to see it. Went to see it. And when I did, who was playing in it but Marilyn Monroe? Now, there she was, after being dead a year or more, there she was, all sexy dressed. There was her voice, upon still playing, and will be for years and years, upon that magnetic tape. If that magnetic tape holds her action, when, if she can look from where she is tonight, I trust she's the same, but I don't know that's to God. But if she can look back, she cannot deny that. She can't deny this because we've got it. How much more has God got ever move, ever action upon His great supreme faith? That'll be, we cannot get out of it. It's right there. And remember, if there was a microphone sitting right here where this is, and I was broadcasting out to the world, the people around the world would hear my voice before it even got across this pulpit to you. Amen. That's in the electronics of the, of the world. And you know, that voice never dies. It'll never die. Science claim in 20 years that they can progress as they have now, that they'll pick up the literal voice of Jesus Christ when he was on earth. In 20 Amen. years from now. Because it's like dropping a pebble in a pond. The little waves may finally fade out of your sight, but science claims they go back to one bank, across the ocean to another, and back and forth, and they never die. And neither does the words that you speak. They'll meet you in the day of the judgment and will condemn you, our Savior. And you'll never be able to get Hallelujah. And we're very conscious. It's coming right through this room now. It's pictures of people. If you don't believe it, turn on the television. And there's voices of people, yet our senses won't pick them up. Now, they've got a sanding station and a magnet pole or tube or a crystal that picks up those voices and reproduces them. And now the only thing the Bible is, is this, the word of Jesus Christ that he spoke. And they are literally alive just like any other word is in the world tonight. Now, if your heart has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and becomes a receiving set from that sending set, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and does the same things that he did. 
Amen. 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 His words can't die. Amen. They're a living part evermore. They don't have to pick up a set or 20 years from now. We receive it right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there you are, living in this great day that we're living in, near the coming of the Son of Man and the lights are flashing everywhere of His coming. We see it in politics. We see it in the church. We see it in the time. We see it everywhere we look. We see the sun don't look like it used to. The world's out of cater. They tell me right now at the North Pole up in there that the sea has become, I forget how much deeper than it used to be. The barren straits, you can walk across them. Now it's many, many, many feet deep in the barren straits. Why? The earth is swelling in the middle. It's getting shallow out here where it was deep and getting deep up here where it was shallow. The world is completely out of cater. She's toddling. She's weaving. All nature is giving in. And everything that we can see in that uh, tonight we find out that the very nature itself is producing in the human race the Amen. sign of His coming. Amen. For the sons of God and the daughters of man becoming fair. And how they're taken unto them are women. What an hour that we're living in. Oh my, how it was in that day. Then we see in the history of this great shocking thing of man worshiping women. And we find out today it's a woman's world. I was in Switzerland not long ago and I was talking to you. Now, nothing against our Christian women. No, sir, they're jewels. I'm talking about the run of the world. There was a lady riding along with me, Brother Gukenbuehl, and his girlfriend that he was going with. He's a man about, about pretty near my age, never been married, an old bachelor. He was going with some young lady and then one of the girls from there and she said, Brother Branham, tell us about America. We understand that the women over there, it's a woman's world over there. Sure enough, I said, that's right. Said, I've always wanted to go. Then I began to explain to her. She said, what? And I said, yes. It changed her opinion right away. Well, she said, how could you live a Christian life in such a place as that then? Think of it. When I went into, into Rome and was down to San Angelo, the catacombs, it was a shocking when I stepped out of my hotel and went down to where's that place called Three Coins and a Fountain. The women on the street of how immoral the women walk up and ask you to take them out on a date. All sorts, sizes, and kinds. And I forget how many come to Billy and I and Brother Baxter before we could get down to the pool. And the man from the TWA that was showing us around. I said, does those women have to live like that? I said, no. When the soldiers over here, they got used to it. And they, yet they got a good job, yet they continue on. But even in a place like that, when I got to the spot of San Angelo, there was a great big sign there at, out from the Vatican that said, a notice to American women, please put on clothes before you come in and give honor to the dead. I seen an American girl get off in Paris, where it's actually one of our fashions used to come from there. But that girl was so immorally dressed with her father and her mother until soldiers that was working out there dropped their picks and shovels and ran up there and looked over the scene to watch this American girl pass. We set the pace of fashion. It used to be Paris, but now they come here to get the vulgar, low-down filth. And this nation where a revival had just passed through of the baptism of the Holy Spirit Amen. with the lovely Lord Jesus showing His signs and wonders of mercy Amen. and speaking as it was in the Amen. days of Noah and the Amen. lights of flashing from side to side. Amen. A God that can raise the dead from His dead. Amen. A God that can heal the sick. Amen. A God that can tell Amen. things before it comes to pass and make it perfect on the God every time without failure. Hallelujah. And you can preach to our women in America and they get worse every year. Amen. Bombay, I mean in Durban, South Africa, where there were some 200,000 natives gathered out to the meeting when the great miracle that God performed. And I've seen 30,000 blanket natives, women standing there with a four-inch clout of beads only in hanging down in front. And uh, the man, no clothes on, the four-inch clown, naked, a blanket that they slept on, a goat skin. They're giving it to them when they're a certain age, and 
and then they live in that, sleep in that, wrap up in that, and die and bury it in a corral somewhere. And I've seen those women so primitive till a woman give birth to a baby sitting 20 foot from me. She never went to a hospital. The, a woman helped her there a minute, and about five minutes is all over. She picked up the baby and held it to her bosom for it to nurse. That primitive. But when they see the power of Almighty God come upon a boy who was so afflicted, and not even in his right mind, that he raised up in his right mind, giving praise to God, 30,000 blanket natives received Jesus Christ as their personal. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What happened? You remember that's ten times bigger than Pentecost. Amen. 30,000. And nobody, I watched those women with my own eyes when they fell up on the ground, breaking their idols, giving their lives to Jesus Christ. They didn't know, they probably never heard his name, many of them. But when they fell up on their, their knees, and I asked them if they were sincere about a minute to break their idols, and they broke their idols. And when they fell on their knees, they'd give their lives to Christ while I prayed for them. And they rose back up, and those women who would stand with their arms down, not knowing they were naked, as soon as the life of Christ touched their life, I've seen those women fold their arms and walk out of the presence of man. And if the touch of Jesus Christ will do that to a blanket native, what are to do to a nation that's heard the gospel for a Amen. Yes, Lord God. There we go. I've seen that. That's not what somebody else said. I've seen that. It's strange then that we call ourselves Christians and each year take more off. And the churches seem to care nothing about it. TV program. Oh, make female flesh and blood. They are not gods. They're not goddess. But it sets America in exactly order to fulfill the scripture. Amen. America's number is 13. America's shrine is a woman. Always. It's on her money. It's on everything. And now it certainly brings into a time that we're going to have American goddess too. Not too far away. Amen. You can see the handwriting on the wall. Oh, what are we going to do? You can't even walk out upon the street and find, look out on the street, start downtown and just see at the display of uh, women. How that they make themselves with clothes on that honest to goodness a woman ought to be ashamed to stand in her dressing room like that. Walking out upon the streets so tight and a little bitty clothes or, and, and out on these bathing beaches with these little kitties or, or what they call it on and such things as that and not knowing that in them is a spirit of evil. Amen. Like many of them sing in choir. That's what Jesus said would take place. Amen. Female flesh. They're flesh and blood. They're not gods. To my opinion, God forgive me if I'm wrong, it's a wholesale strip tease. Amen. 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 You can't hardly blame a man if he's not a, a Christian. But what would fall and fall into temptations in such a place that he would do something wrong because he could not hold himself. It's amazing that there's not more ravishes goes on because so many of it, the women's in for it. But if it wasn't, how could you blame the man? Put blame where blame belongs. Amen. Woman say, uh, Brother Branham, I miss his moral as I no doubt about that. But my sister, do you know that you're going to answer at the day of judgment for committing adultery when you throw yourself out there and man look upon you? He said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her. Already in his heart will have to answer for it. And maybe you didn't do the act. But if you permit Satan to put that spirit on you when nature itself ought to teach you that's wrong. Amen. Without the Spirit of God, nature should do it. Teach you that's wrong. I predict 
that soon they'll come out with one of these things to just be a fig leaf again. I predicted that 30 years ago. Some insult to the Bible. They'll do it. It's public striptease. Now, the devil does the same to the sons of God today. That's right. What's our businesses? Most of our businesses is controlled by women. Lots of them. That's right. Look at our churches. Look at our nation. How the sons of God bow low at the shrine of these things, these women. When they're, to me, it's no more than public harlots. That's an awful thing to say, but it's the naked truth. I know that people hear these tapes and things will say these things, but how can you do it if you present yourself like that and man look up on you that Jesus said you committed adultery with him? And when that man has to answer for committing adultery, who did it? Whose fault is it? It's the woman that stripped herself like that and produced herself or presented herself before that sinner. That's right. What is the sign of? The end time. The red light. Motherhood's broke. Nations are breaking. Now, if you want to see where Jesus said that, read Matthew 5, 28. That's where it was at. Female life has been the cause and form of falling upon that sexual power has been the root. If you want to trace back, here's some nations that I trace back their fall. One was Egypt, Assyria, Rome, and what more? Fell by the power of women. Notice, there is nothing that God could give a man outside of salvation better than a nice wife. There's no man can console, no, no person can console a person. When they're tired, they won't confide in anyone like they do their own wife. And what a fortunate thing you brothers are when you've got a nice little wife that's clean and upright and moral and you can come in when you're tired and weary and sit down and she can talk to you, she can do more with you than anybody else. Amen. That's right. She's a jewel. She's a queen. But remember, woman was made for man, not man for woman. The last created being that God ever created was a man. A woman is a byproduct from a man. And she was made for man, not man made for the woman, and they vice versa and around, and man falls at the shrine of women. That was the very thing that started it at the beginning. That's what happened in the beginning. When God's son, Adam, could not be tempted to doing what was wrong, Satan come into a person called the serpent, which is like a man. And that's where it started. And Eve got from behind the word of God, and that caused every heartache, every graveyard, every sin that was ever committed started right there. Here it is again. What women was the cause of the first fall, and women ends up the time. She started, she ends it. No one of the Bible said, those that escape out of Zion shall be glorious in the sight of the Lord. When in Isaiah 5, he talked about how the immorals of the women would get in the last days and how they'd be so much clothes they had to have and how they'd have to have their hair set and everything like that. The Bible speaks that. Isaiah 5. How she walked with high heels. She was on tickling her feet as she went along and she'd roll down her stockings and the things she would do. A many changeable set uh, apparel and stuff like that. And said, all oh, that will be taken away from her. Amen. And she shall sit and stink from him while. And said, even seven women will grab one man and said, we'll do our own work. Let us just take your name to take away our reproach. But he said, how glorious will that little branch that escapes all these things will be holiness unto the Lord. And that day, when real genuine wine born again, women know their place, though they be laughed at and called silly. And old fashioned and everything, but act like a woman, like a lady, stand like a woman, dress like a woman, talk like a woman, live like a lady. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. That means so be it. Don't get scared and don't hurt you. All right. 
Jesus' own words said what would happen. That great display. Also, he said in the days of Lot, if you want to mark that scripture down, it's Luke 17, 28. He said, they were eating, drinking, they bought, they sold. Ordinarily, these are legitimate things. But watch. Um, and that they occupied. But they put all the, their mind on it. And in the days of Lot, women were so low in their mark until they were not used as women should be used. But they were perverted until they, it becomes so common that women become so common that they, they man live with man. The natural perversion from the sex cells had changed its position because that women had become so cheap. A few days ago, I was over Tucson, went to get a loaf of bread, and there's a boy sitting out there, and two little boys in the car, and they come in and get a pack of cigarettes. The old gray-headed gentleman looked down and said, Who's these cigarettes for, your mother? I said, No, it's for that boy. He said, Is he old enough to have them? I said, Yes, sir. He looked back like that, and I stand with a loaf of bread and a quart of milk, watching, and he went, said, All right, he gave it to him. He looked back to me and said, I doubt that. I said, He can't get old enough to do it. He's too... He ain't old enough at any age. He said, I'll agree with you. He said, do you, do you have a hard time trying to quit him? I said, I never did start him. I said, I never did start him. I said, my parents smoked and used tobacco, but the Lord God kept me from it. He turned and looked at me. It's kind of strange. And he said, well, it's, I think it's a rotten shame today to see a house that used to be we put women on a pedestal. said, we honored her. We took off her hat in her presence. We walk down the streets and gentlemen, when you hear somebody make a remark about a certain woman, they'd slap him down. See? And said they honored women, but he said, Sir, women has brought it on themselves. Said now they don't get up, used to get up in a streetcar, a lady get up, every man to take his head off and let her sit down. Said now it's pushed crowd, said they brought it on themselves. And that's the truth. That devil hole of Hollywood got her. Produced it out on the televisions and magazines. So the thing has become a great big pot of filth. Why? I know that ain't popper saying, but it's true saying. It's the truth. It's the word of the Lord. And also a warning sign. That Christ will come in this generation. Except the ones that sees this come to pass will not pass out until all these things be fulfilled. Amen. said, both heavens and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Amen. It's a warning. Red lights flashing. Drop of the curtain. We're at the end time. We see the signs of the Lord Jesus healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out evil spirits. We see the, the people made saintly and holy by the Holy Spirit. We see lives changed. We see great signs. We see mystic signs in the sky, like flying saucers. The Pentagon, many of the people put it on television, write it up. They don't know what to think about. All kinds of mysterious signs. The Lord Jesus coming down in the form of a pillar of fire, having his picture taken, living among us, proving that he's the same. Yes, we see all these things happening. We see the coldness of the church. We see the denomination growing. When you see the fig tree and all the other trees, Putting forth their buds, Jews returning, the fig tree Jews returning to their nation, their own country. We see the Presbyterians, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Lutheran, the Pentecostals, all the churches putting forth the leaves, revival. He said, Get ready, that's the time when we see that coming to pass. That's when God's fixing to call his elect. Then when another sign said, When you see the women becoming extremely pretty. When you see the sons of God taking them with wives and taking them to them wives and doing this, that, they said, No, that that's the sign. Amen. Yes. Here we are. Amen. Now, something else I wrote down. Remember Lot's two daughters. Yes, we remember that. Down in the city of Sodom. Jesus said here in Luke 17, as it was in the days of Sodom. Remember that man had misused women in such a way until the natural act of life was no more desired. And, oh, it's awful to say this from a platform, but this is the ever was truth that ought to go from here. Amen. 
And it is so bad today till there is tens of thousands times thousands of them on the increase everywhere. Perversion. Sodomites. As it was in that day the cause of natural uh, use of human life to reproduce themselves upon the earth has been so mistreated and so gone on in the way it has until the desire of it is failing fastly. I say within another 10 or 15 years it'll be past almost. The way it's increasing now. Great remarks. I had something from Edgar Hoover on that but I don't know why I thought I had it laying here but I haven't. Of what he said about it. And now we find out these things. Oh my! Jude in his little big book, I call it, in the seventh verse. Let's just read it. I want to read this. Jude in the seventh. This is the last book before the book of, of Revelation. I've got it marked down here. Uh, Jude uh, 7, verse 7. Man, woman, bringing marriage vows, breaking them, going after strange flesh. Listen. And as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner give themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh. See. Oh, fornication, going after strange flesh, are set forth of examples of suffering and vintage and eternal fire. That is to be completely consumed and done away with. Uh, Here some time ago in Los Angeles, I was waiting, or out at the campgrounds. I was riding up the road, and a, a little lady, a pretty little girl, very pretty, was going up the road, and I thought she must be going to a show. And she had on a little frontier uh, clothes, just about about a six or eight inches wide across the front of her, a little three or four inch fringe hanging, and up higher on her body, a little spot just about enough that she could wide up and shut every bit of it up in your fist hanging across her this way with a cowboy hat on and a pair of boots with tassels on them and a very attractive, I could see where any young man would slide bricks and everything to stop to her, going twisting up the road. And I was fixing to turn to the campground. And I went up towards the campgrounds. I started to turn around to go back. I thought I'd stop. Say, young lady, I wish to speak to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though you be a pretty girl, there's no doubt about that. Though you have a figure that would probably, you, you want to hear the brakes whine. Do you realize that that spirit that's making you do that will drive you to a devil's hell where you'll suffer through the ages of his to come? Do you realize that that pretty little foreign body and that well-set cheeks and hair and so forth and red lips, maybe in in another six months, the worms will be crawling in and out of that well-formed body out there in the dust. And that soul that stays in there a day of being a devil's torment. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Then something stopped me. As if God to say, if you do that, they'll lock you down here in jail. See? There you are. And then I seen Billy come out and motion. It was time to come and hear him sing and only believe. Oh, my! How can people be bewitched in such stuff as that is because they disregard the Word of God? And another thing is ministers behind the platform who's associated with these organizations who read that and know it are forbidden to say anything about it because they'll drive their congregation away from them. And the churches are looking for members. But God's looking for born again saints. Yeah. 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 God yeah. Yeah. the Lord. Shine as the stars. Hallelujah. God, help us to be honest and tell the truth what Jesus yeah. Christ said. Yeah. But that's the day we're living in. That's the signs that Jesus said would be. And we see it right before us. Look. Now, and Jude, the seventh chapter again. Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, my. What an awful thing. Un. Married to women, going after strange flesh. A man that's married to his wife, they're, they're not, no longer two, they're one. And a man that'll run out after another woman, he automatically separates himself from his wife. And a woman that runs out with another man, she's dead to her husband. 
She's denied her own flesh. She's cut away from him. That's right, in the day of judgment, we'll have to answer for it. But today, they don't want to hear a message like that. Amen. The people don't want to hear that. They want to be tickled in their ears. Exactly what the Holy Spirit told me the day I laid that cornerstone there. said to preach the word. Amen. Be instant, in season, out of season, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall heap for themselves together teachers having itching ears and shall be turned from the truth to faith. He said, when the vision leaves you, read 2 Timothy 4. He said, don't forget 2 Timothy 4. And when the vision left me standing right there on 7th Street, a 19-year-old boy, standing there, the voice of God spoke out in the room and he said, 2 Timothy 4. That's exactly what it's turned to be. The time will come when they'll not endure sound doctrine. People want something, the Pentecostals want something that can pat them on the back and let them live the way they want to and they can play the piano at 40 beats per second and jump up and down and dance about it. And women do the way they want to and man the same way. The Presbyterian, Methodist, Lutheran, and Baptist, there's a many a sincere person in all those organizations. That's exactly right. But that system has got them so bound down that they think as long as they belong to that church and their names upon those books that they're heaven bound. Your name on a book here on earth won't mean that to God. Your name's got to be written in the Lamb's book of life by the blood of Jesus Christ that your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. That's right. But they want that kind. That's the kind of pastors they want in. They don't want nothing else. And when God in this last days has shut every divine gift that's recommended in the Bible, Amen. every gift that Jesus Christ yeah. promised, Amen. every gift and every Amen. sign and every end time sign, Amen. everything that was promised in this Bible as far as I can see myself has already been shut before the nation and she plunges on towards hell as hard as she can go. Amen. Amen. Tell them to run on anyhow. Let me just get a few more scriptures here before closing. All right. Oh, set forth for eternal destruction is what they are, the Bible says. This nation lies in this same rottenness. This same social rottenness this, this nation lies in it tonight. You know that. It's no joke. It's no hearsay. It's the truth. Amen. Genesis 6.12 all flesh was corrupt. Man walked in his own way, in his own thinking, ignoring the laws of God. That's the way man does today. Man don't want to hear the Word of God. People don't want to hear it. They want to walk in their own way. Jezebel refused to hear the Word of the Lord. She wouldn't want to call that old fuzzy-looking preacher Elijah her pastor, but he was her pastor anyhow. Amen. Right. God sent him and he bellowed out his message. Amen. Though uneducated, don't know where he come from or where he went to, he came on the scene with the word of the Lord. He sent his message and he preached and Amen. he condemned everything that was called sin. And that modern Jezebel has switched and bewitched the people under the witchcraft of her powers. Amen. Until the whole nation was corrupted and Elijah stood alone out there on the mountain. Amen. Amen. God said, Elijah, don't think that I've got 7,000 down there Amen. that's honest in the heart yet. That's his second fool. Yeah. The third uh, one. Hey, Went man. back far then. But remember, God was merciful. And he, he, Elijah's message condemned that unbelieving generation. Amen. Noah's message condemned that generation and brought judgment upon those who refused to hear it and deliverance to those who believed it. Amen. And as it was in the days of Noah, so Amen. shall it be in the coming of the sun. Yes. Genesis 6. Ignoring God's laws. They say God's laws. God's word says today... Uh, in the Bible, now listen, I'm not saying this to any individual person. I'm only responsible as your brother. I'm responsible for telling you the whole truth. Yes. As the great St. Paul said before he's leaving, I have not shunned to declare you the whole counsel of God. Yes. Now the Bible says today that women should not cut their hair. I don't care how many preachers say that's all right, it's wrong. Amen. I don't care how many churches stand for it. The Bible still says that it is wrong. 
It's a shame for her to do so. But they continue to do it anyhow. Amen. Going on. What are they doing? In their own mind. Making their own selves pretty. They think they're pretty. God's word warns she shall not do these things. She shall not put on a garment of slack or anything that pertains to a man. But she goes right on just the same. Amen. Try to stop her. Say, what are you hollering about then, Brother Bram? What's you going on? Well, people like you better be. I don't care. That, I do care what people think. I don't get me wrong. But I'm interested in what God thinks. Amen. And this is His Word. Amen. Yeah. You tell her strong to do that, she'll go right ahead and do it anyhow. See? Why? Women and all Christians do these things, and the church don't seem to care anything about it. Why is it the sons of God has hell for the lust of female flesh and blood and denied the very God and blood that bought them to separate them from those filthy people? Amen. 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 That's the truth. So help me, God, it's the truth. Try to stop her. You think Noah's preaching had any hindrance? No, sir. But what is it? It's a voice. The voice. And when we're all called to the judgment, the very message that I'm preaching tonight will meet me right there word by word. Uh, and then what are you going to do? It's a flashing red light there at the time, bullheaded amongst the women. We're going to, we are just set this because of this being women. And you wonder why I'm always hollering about this. Now I'm going to lay, get a lot, a lot of scriptures thrown in here before closing. And show you why. And that's the reason I've got to stay true to this word. And every servant of God ought to stay true to the word. Amen. You must stay. Because there's got to be a voice somewhere crying out against it. I don't care what the rest of them does. You're not responsible for them. You answer as an individual. Amen. You don't answer as a Methodist. You don't answer as a Baptist or a Pentecostal. You answer as an individual to God. Amen. For your own life. And we see these signs. And yet they go on to it. Tell her it's wrong. See what she said. Bullheaded. That's exactly what Eve done. Amen. Eve no better than to do that. Did she? She had the word of God. Amen. Said the day you eat there of that day you die. Well, why did she do it? She wanted her own way. Amen. Why will women cut their hair? Why will women wear these clothes? And the Bible saying it. That's just exactly what they're supposed to do. And the thing that they do, they're all condemned. That's exactly. But why did she do it? She got her own self. Yes, sir. She's going to have her own way. <laughs> the church says nothing about it. And the church is supposed to be the bride of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And said nothing about it. Tell one of them about it. You know what they say? And so much as to say... No old Bible is going to stand in my way from having some fun. I just said, exactly. You're telling me it's written in the Bible. Oh, they might not say those words, but that's what they express. Did you ever hear the old saying, actions speak louder than words? Amen. Oh, that does it. Action speaks louder than words. Amen. No matter what you're saying, your, your life speaks so loud that they can't hear your testimony. As I said this morning, just jump as high as you live. See? Your action speaks louder than your words. And you just might as well come out and say it because your own words speak, your, your words, no matter what it is, your action speaks what, what you are. Amen. If you speak anything different from what you really are, it becomes hypocrisy. Jesus said, you hypocrites, Amen. how can you say good things when all the heart speaks Amen. the heart speaks Amen. the mouth? See, they were saying something they didn't mean. And women so it's to say it. Oh, my, I have my own fun. What happens? Out of marriage, here's another place in the Bible. Out of marriage goes about obey. <laughs> obey. <laughs> A keeper home. Chaste of good works. <laughs> she laughs in your face and goes to the power plant. <laughs> Somebody's uh, office. Uh, my husband, oh, I doubt that. If these forces today, such a disgrace, put women on the police force. If that isn't a mark of 
of debauchery among any city. As many men is out of work and they have to put them women out there. Amen. Amen. Our Lord, help. When the Bible said she should stay home and be a chaste, keep her at home. But she keeps all the bosses' books and yours too. That's right. And I talk about good women now. I'm not telling this to you women that's really godly women. God bless you. That's on tape or wherever more. But I'm talking about where you find one like that, you find 1,500 the other way. They won't listen to a word. Keep your Bible. Preach it to yourself. We don't want to hear it. Obey. Come on. She might say this. You tell your Bible story to somebody else. Keep your God to somebody else and leave me alone. Why are you hollering at me about? I never asked you to say these things. I know, but God did. So that's all. So they still corrupt the ways, just as they did the ways of the Lord, just as they did in that day. So do they today. Just the same. It hasn't changed. It doesn't change. It won't change. Juvenile delinquency finally gets your children. The jail gets part of the women and the man, and hell takes the whole thing. That's exactly right. Finally swallows them all up. And the preaching seems to go over the top of their backs. They never listen to it. They're going to have their own. You can tell the Bible says this. is they keep your Bible. We're going to have our fun. I can hear some of you sisters saying now, maybe not right present, but here he's saying, Who, me, obey my husband? <laughs> I make him obey me. <laughs> but that's where you're wrong. Amen. Stay at home, Chase. I don't care what the Bible says about it. You leave me alone. Listen, sister. That wasn't a, back in the dark ages. That's the voice of today. Amen. That never happened so much back in the Andalusia. It happens today, too. That's the same thing. Again, to say, I'm a modern woman. I live in America. Well, that's no more than you live in a hog pen. It wouldn't make a bit of difference to God. Where do you live? You are what you are in your heart. That's right. Don't think, sister, that you're so modern, that you're one of these modern women, as you want to say. They, you're from way back, according to this Bible, in dark ages, in the Andalusian time, in the time of Noah. That's when they did the same thing. So you're not so very modern after all, are you? See? That's the way they acted in the Andalusian world. See? That's the way they're acting today, so it must be dark age again. Back in those great dark beyond. And you man that will let your wife do it. You're no longer sons of God. No, you kind of fell into Sodom. That's right. Let the women boss you around. Oh, my. I don't know where to say this or not. I better bypass this part. But, it, all right. <laughs> this is terrible. But all to this age that we're living. You see the red light on? Flashing? The trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. The morning will break eternal bright and fair. Then his chosen ones shall gather to the dust of the earth to their home beyond the sky. Oh, what a day that will be. All right. Oh, yes. Go back in Sodom. Don't worry. There's an A-bomb waiting to clean it all up. <laughs> That's right. Clean up the whole world. It'll do it. And then it'll all be renewed again like we've seen under the sixth seal for a redeemed bunch of people who's accepted the Lord Jesus, who's become Christians, who sold out their cares and their fashions of this world. And has come to Jesus Christ and looking to Him and Him alone in His humble, simple uh, program to come and believe on Him and receive eternal life. And if you say you've got eternal life and disagree with this Bible, your eternal life is not the eternal life that God gives. You're deceived by death and not a life. That's right. Now, oh, fear God and keep His word, for this is a full commandment. The red lights are flashing. And the time is at hand, as it was in the days of Noah. See, they took the legitimate thing and perverted it. They took eating, and they took drinking, and they put building, and they put all these other things and perverted it. 
Now, Jesus expects us to build a home. See? But just look what has taken place in that. Eating, he expects us to eat. That's right. But look what's taking place in that. Drinking, we expect to drink, or waters and whatever we have to do. But instead of that, they tuck it into drinks and liquor and everything. Cocktails, bringing their women in. See? And what about the increase of population? Yeah. As it was in the days of Noah. What about the beauty of women increasing constantly more and more? See? Red light. What about the time that women would come when they would be the way they were, heady, high-minded, and they, were, they couldn't tell them nothing, preach the word to them, they would go right on and do it anyhow. See? What would happen? Just exactly like it was in the days of Noah. One day, the door of mercy will be closed. Amen. Amen. Then the scripture says the sanctuary becomes smoky. That means that the intercessor has gone from it. And as long as the lamb is still back there, as I said this morning or somewhere I was speaking, that as long as the lamb is there to make intercession, there's still mercy. But what assurance do we have when we see the train is already in the block? When we see the coming of the Lord, the flashing of the lights, how I could speak of different things as we know that He promised to do here in the last days and we see it right before us. And then we see our, this subject tonight of another red light flashing, of carrying on among our women and things the way they're doing. We see it's pointing every, every milepost, everything, every needle, every compass is set straight on to His coming. Amen. We're at the right. end. There's nothing else that I know to happen but the coming of the Lord. And then, my dear friend, that's outside of Christ, what do you think about this? Are you just resting, honestly, friend, I want to ask you a simple question. Are you just resting upon some little sensation you had? Or some maybe something that you had, maybe you got happy one time and danced all over the place as many a holiness people and Pentecostals and Nazarenes and Pilgrim holiness. They believe if they get happy enough to dance, that, that's it. And then cut your hair, wear shorts, would the Holy Spirit make you do that when He condemns it in the Bible? What about you who says, well, uh, I belong to the church. I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a Methodist, or whatever I am. I'm a member, my mother's a charter member of the church. I've been a charter member. And the very Spirit that's on you is making you do the things that this Bible condemns for you to do. You say, I spoke with tongues, Brother Branham. Now, don't you get a hold of that. I spoke with tongues, and that's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. If your life, if you can still cut your hair, if you can still do these things the Bible says not do, you can speak with tongues all day and night, and it's still nothing to do with God. Amen. The tree's known by its fruit. I'm getting old. I know that. Each day I get a new ache and pain. Every one of us do. You might as well tell the truth. I thought, God, don't let me. One of the most miserable things is to see a man or a woman who's never accepted Christ and just lived an old moss-backed church member, meaner than Satan himself, and see him out there with a crabbed old something, well, I tell you, I don't believe in it. God never, that's a, that's, a, that's a harvest crown that Satan can crown a life with. A grouchy old woman, about 60 or 70 years old with fat hanging down under her arms and wrinkles all over her face and her hair bobbed up in four or five different colors and strutting herself down in a pair of little shorts. If that is a crowning of Satan I've ever seen, or some old crabbit man, oh God, I know, I, give me grace to never complain. And I want my life, Lord. I want my people's life. God grant that our life can be crowned no matter if we suffer Whatever takes place, how many turns against me? I know this one thing in my life. As I get older, my friends, the stream behind me will soon be running out. Narrow and narrow as I go down the road. And I know one thing. It'll come to pass after a while that there'll be nobody come to me and say, ask me advice. The ones who know me in my younger days will be gone on if I shall live. My friends will get fewer and fewer as I get older now. And I know that someday I've got to die. I hope that God never lets Satan crown me as an old, crabbed, indifferent man. Or my wife, an old, nagging woman. Or your wife, or you that way. 
I pray, brother, that our lives will be crowned with the fruits of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. Love, joy, long-suffering, yeah. gentleness, patience, truth, faith, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. My life thins out. About 35 years ago, I stood in the pulpit here as a little boy. Tonight, I'm an old, gray and hair and bald-headed, stupid shoulder. I'm broke down. My life is running out. The threads are getting brittle that I'm walking on. As I move on down the stream, my friends get fewer. After a while, it'll come to a place maybe that I, I won't enjoy the songs like I used to. Maybe my grandchildren. The children have said, don't make Grandpa nervous. It may come to that if I live. Then I'll come on down until I can't get up out of my chair. Then one morning, the fog will come into the room. I motion across the border to death to come get me. He can only take me by the hand and lead me across to my master. He is not my slave driver. I am not his slave. He's my slave. Christ conquered death for me. And only one thing he can do is pull me in the presence of my maker. When this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, the moment when a mother sticks to have a baby, you notice I don't care how cruel she's been and how mean your know, while before that baby's born, the mother gets gentle. Why is it? When them little muscles in that womb is twitching and jumping like that, there's a heavenly body waiting for it. And when it comes from the mother, the doctor or the midwife, whoever it is, has to pick it up and shock it, spank it, shake it, or something. And then it catches a breath of life, and the little angelic spirit comes into it, the breath of life, and it becomes a living soul. And when we have Christ in our heart, and Christ becomes real in our heart. It's a little baby. If this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, Jesus said in John 14, in closing, I'll say this. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe in me. For in my Father's kingdom is many tabernacles. I'll go and prepare a place for you. If this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have one. I'll go and prepare a place for you that where I am there may ye be also. Most to be with him. Then I know it's this little child Christ for the new birth has been formed. When all other life breaks away, all mortal life and everything's gone, then it'll take something to shock me. And it takes death. Death gives you the shock when it strikes you, but it only forms you again in a new kingdom over on the other side where there's no sickness, sorrow, no old age or nothing. God help us. How, friend, can you ever turn down something like that? seeing that there's no hopes in the world outside of Jesus Christ. The red lights are flashing. Nations are breaking. Israel's awakening. The signs that the Bible foretold. Women cutting their hair, wearing shorts, red lights on, see? Gentile days numbered with horrors encumbered. Return, O oh, disperse to your own. The day of redemption is near. Man's hearts are failing for fear. Be filled with the Spirit. Have your lamps trimmed and clear. Look up. Your redemption is near. Hallelujah. I love Him. I want you to love Him. As we bow our heads just a moment in a word of prayer in closing, the red lights are flashing. The signal is on. The coming of the Lord is at hand. He speaks to the nations. He speaks to the people. He speaks to the signs and wonders as we took Sodom and showed how that angel come to Abraham. The signs that he performed just ere the falling of the fire. We see that. He said in the days of Lot they built, they sold. Look at it, they. And as the days of Noah, women becoming pretty, the sons of God falling Human flesh being worshipped in the form of females. And all these things that's taking place that we've talked of tonight. The lights are flashing. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Are you still just a church member? Are you sure, my friend? How do you know you live through the night? Look at Brother Wade standing here this morning. In a moment, just turning around to shake hands with somebody. Drop dead right in his track. God might not be so kind to you as to give you another opportunity. You don't know what minute that that heart makes its last beat. Think of it. The coming of Christ is flashing its signs. Look at them. 
See, if what I've told you tonight, it may not be very popular, but it's the truth. It's what God said. And here we are. Women don't want to stay home. They don't want to take care of their families. They just hire a babysitter and go out to a party somewhere. Juvenile delinquent. All things is taking place. Bobbing their hair, wearing shorts, makeup. The increase is getting prettier and prettier. Man, sons of God are falling. It's a trap for Satan to use the sons of God to fall into that just as Jesus said. It has to happen. He said it would be there. Here it is. He said when these things come to pass, this generation will not pass away. And that's 40 years until all these things be fulfilled. Think of it. Are you still just a church member? Have you done wrong? Look, just search your life over tonight, man, women. Look at yourself. Look at your own thoughts. What in your present state now? If Christ was on earth preaching this, you say, if, if he would have, if I'd have heard him preach that, I, I would have repented. If you would, this is his own word tonight. You'll do it now. If you're without God and you know, oh, you say, I belong to church. I've spoken tongues. I, I don't, I, we're laying that aside. Look at yourself. Check your life now with God's word. Are you that person walk away and say, I don't care what the Bible says. Brother Branham, I think you're wrong. It ain't me It's wrong. If there's any wrong about it, it's a word. And you don't know God yet, and you're not sure that if Jesus should come at this hour, that you'd be ready to go, why would you trifle when seeing death is so close? When see the end is so close? If there's any here with your heads bowed now, we want to be remembered in prayer as we close. Would you just raise up your hand and say, Brother, pray for me. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother, sister, all just over the building. That's it. Let's just take a little inventory now. You sisters now, with all good faith and hope, just think of this. Have I really obeyed God? Really, where is my desire? <coughs> brother Branham, I, 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 I still do these things. I, I feel good. I feel happy. Do you know heathens feel just as happy? You know a drunk man's just as happy under liquor as you are? The influence of liquor? And if you're happy under anything that's contrary to the Word of God, it's the devil. If you say, I'm satisfied in my church, and you hear the Word of God preach and won't tally up to it, you're inspired by the wrong thing. No matter what your inspiration is. I've seen him scream and jump and holler and, and everything and drink blood out of a human skull and call on the devil. Right. Just as happy as you ever could be. Heathenism produces just as much psychology as anything else. Psychics of the mind, but the experience of Christ is of the heart that changes the whole makeup. Changes the person into a new creature. Think of it real hard. Look at yourself. Just imagine a mirror before you. You're looking at yourself. Am I honest? Am I sincere? Do I really in my heart, do I serve the Lord. Say, I serve it. Look in you women with bobbed hair. Wear short. Look at you that does these things. Look at you man who lets your wives do Say, am I son of God? Am I sodomite? You women say, am I really a modern woman or am I some Andalusian something that Jesus said would be here in the last days again? Think it over. Look at yourself. See, your own being expresses what you are. And if you're not right, will you be honest enough just to be honest now? Raise your hand and say, Christ, I don't hold my hand to Brother Branham or to no other person but you, but I am wrong. Forgive me. Brother Branham promised to pray for me, and I'm going to raise my hand and say, Jesus, have mercy on me tonight. Save me for Christ's sake. I don't want to be lost. I, all this life you've given me, it would be a most horrible thing if I, if I just stole it away. When I had this golden opportunity tonight, to really see with my own eyes that the red lights are flashing on every side. The coming of the Lord had promised that He would show these signs and He'd heal the sick, He'd raise the dead, He'd cast out devils. It'd be a bunch of uh, just a few people, just a minority that the world would be making fun of and calling bad names and so forth like that. And they have to call us bad names. They have to call the truth bad names. Jesus said, Whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven when he's doing the very same thing you see done. He said, But whosoever shall speak against the Holy Spirit when it comes to do the same thing will never be forgiven in this world. 
See, they have to do that. There has to be a message like that to make the people make fun of it, to show God's justice to condemn the whole world and destroy it. While there is mercy in someone standing in the gap, Jesus Christ in the open door tonight, won't you receive him, my friend? Now, customarily, it's come to the altar. That's all right. I have nothing against it. But the scripture, they said, as many as believe was baptized. From all your heart, if you'll surrender your life to Jesus Christ right where you're sitting, right where he spoke to you when you raised your hand, that same God that could call this man back to life, being laying dead right before me this morning, to confirm to you that I'm telling you the truth. Who can raise the dead but God? That's right. So it isn't your, your little broke-up pastor here. It's the Christ that loves you. And he's expressing to you tonight, you've heard the truth. You saw the truth. It's from my word. You see my word call back. You see my word predict these things. You see it happen just exactly through all these years without one failure. Now, what will you do with Jesus while the red light's flashing? Why don't you do this? Go down that old sack of worldly peanuts. Why don't you throw down that old True Story magazine and that old old junk that you're pulling your soul through every day. Why don't you scoot that television in the corner and turn it around if it's keeping you away from church? Why don't you lay aside every weight that's easily beset you? Why don't you raise your heart to Christ and say, Christ, tonight I'm finished. I'm making ready. I see you're coming. I'm picking up the suitcase, God's Bible, that's packed with eternal life. And from henceforth on, I'll live from this. Won't you do it while we pray? Our Heavenly Father, not meaning to be rude, by no means, Lord, but the message is pointed at the time, not at individuals, not at any certain person, but it's pointed at the time. It's a time the Holy Spirit seemed to press me to take this as after many, many times across this pulpit that we have showed the days of Lot, the days of Sodom, the days that Jesus spoke of, the signs of the time, the coming of the Lord in many ways. And then after all that I have spoken so hard against the women of this day and around the country, then, Father, I thought it would be the Holy Spirit speaking to me that I would tell the people why I have done this. It's because that your inspired word has so probed at my heart till I just could not hold the peace. Some nearly 50 or 75 hands in the building went up, Father. Upon a crude, cutting word of the Lord, but it's brought them to shock to let them know that the whistle's blowing. The saints are all gathering together. The nations are tearing to pieces. The signs of the coming. The red lights are flashing. And we see by the action pointed to our women tonight of this day that the way that the Bible said they would be, and here they are, the infallible voice of Jesus Christ warned us to watch the days of Noah and compare it with the day that we lived. And then when we've seen those things happen, women becoming fair and sons of God taking them and how these things would be then we know that that generation would see the coming of the Lord then we know the flashing light his coming is near I pray Heavenly Father that you will bless each one that raised their hand I, I just offer this humble sincere prayer and I know you will hear me if you were so kind to Brother Way this morning to let a humble little prayer start that heart beating again of a sincere love for a brother that had dropped into his wife's lap, cold and dead form. Lord, let people know tonight that being dead in sin and trespasses is far more dangerous than dying a physical death. For there's no one can catch you at that time if you pass beyond the veil in sin and trespasses. Grant tonight, Lord, that every soul that raised their hand to offer this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus, that 
there will be such a revolution come to their life that there will be such a purpose in their heart that purpose in their heart that they'll sin no more against God that they'll stand from this hour on upon God's eternal blessed word and be fed by his Holy Spirit and led into the paths of life day by day as they journey on from this hour henceforth my Heavenly Father I may never see them I may never be able to shake their physical hand here in this earth though I'd like to do it but Lord God I pray that this prayer will be answered and you said in your word he that will hear my word and will believe on him that sent me has eternal life and shall not come to the judgment but pass from death unto life in my humble way of bringing the truth of God tonight many heard the word now you promised that you would save them and they would not perish that no man could pluck them from your hand that you would raise them up at the last day not one hair of their head should perish you promised it now as a prayer as a servant Lord and as a brother to, to them I, I pray this prayer and place them into the hands of God that not Amen. one harm shall ever be able to come to them and Satan will not pluck them from the hand of God they are yours trophy Amen. I trust that You'll give them long life, and if possible, let them see the coming of the Lord Jesus. May they go from here tonight as to be soul winners to tell others, to bring them to a saving knowledge of Christ. Granted, it's all into your hands, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. While we have our heads bowed just a moment. I wonder if such person present now that feels that while we were in prayer that, that something unusual happen in your heart and you feel that from now on that you are going to live a consecrated life to Christ and you see the coming of the Lord at hand you believe what I preach was the truth about this flashing red light of the way things are and and you understand that it's the word of the Lord causes Christ and you believe from tonight on you'll live a better closer life to Christ because the prayer that you prayed tonight in the confession you made, and with your head bowed, you just raise your hand and say, I believe that from this night on, I'll live a different life. God bless you. That's fine. That's just wonderful. Uh, I believe to say, everyone perhaps that raised their hand a while ago, raise your hands back that they had accepted it. Now, if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, remember there's not another name under heaven given among man, whereby you must be saved. But the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, there's only one bride, the bride of Christ, and that bears his name. Now, and if you've never been baptized by mercy in water in the name of Jesus Christ, let me as his servant, if God has proven to you by signs and wonders and by his word that I tell the truth, uh, co command you as St. Paul did in Acts 19 who found a bunch of Baptists They've been baptized by John the Baptist. He said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, We know why there be any Holy Ghost. He said, Then to what was you baptized? They said, We've been baptized already. But John the Baptist out in the Jordan, the same man that baptized Jesus Christ, that would be a wonderful baptism. But Paul said, It's no good now. He commanded them to have to be rebaptized again in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 19.5. And Paul said, if an angel comes down from heaven and preaches any other gospel than this that I have preached, let him be accursed. Galatians 1.8. Then he repeated again and said, as I have said, so say I again, though an angel, let alone a minister, bishop, pope, or whatever it might be, if an angel come down from heaven, a cherubim out of the heavens and preached another gospel than that, let him be cursed. And I command you, if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, while the water is in the pool and the robes are waiting, come and be baptized, calling upon the name of the Lord, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you and to your children, and to them as far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, now it's up to you. Persuading man, I try. But to make man, I cannot. And you never work against a man's will because if a man or woman is predestinated to eternal life, when the light of God flashes over that seed, it will come to life. 
And if there's life among us tonight, Father, that you flashed your light over and they've seen the truth, may they walk humbly and sweetly to the pool to be baptized into the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, which we know that every person in the Scripture was had to be baptized and rebaptized. Those who were not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ had to be rebaptized. And the great apostle who had the keys to the kingdom said on the day of Pentecost, Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, that your sins may be remitted. And then the promise of the Holy Ghost is to you. Granted, it will be carried out tonight in full measure, Father. Now I commit them to you now. Take these few words in the meditation of my heart and may it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, and anchor upon thy children and give to them eternal life. Save all those who are savable and heal those that are sick. May the grace of God rest upon each of them as we commit them to you now in Jesus' name. Now, with our heads bowed, we're going to ask our sister that plays the piano to come here just a moment, just about five more minutes. And if there's any that desires to be baptized, uh, made a confession and believe. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you believe it with all your heart, not just, just emotional, but you believe it, and you're ready to confess that you're wrong, and you're not standing upon your own merits, but upon what He done, and you're ready to walk forward to take on His name and water baptism and become a member of the body by the Holy Spirit, then the women's room is on my right and the man's room is on my left with robes and things ready. While we bow our heads as our sister plays, I can hear my Savior calling us. The song leader will give us a little word of that. With our heads bowed now, the service is in the hand of Almighty God now to whoever wishes to be baptized, wishes to go into the prayer rooms to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These instructors here will be ready to instruct or do anything. May the words not fall in vain, but may they accomplish that from which is perfect. With our heads bowed, may we pray now, and where he leads you, follow. Can hear I say I pray every
How does he speak? Through his word. In your heart. When you come now, it's your invitation. Remember, if it happens before we come together again, you've been warned. I say, Holly, take thy cross and follow, follow me where he is. Now, will some of the brethren, for instructions, go in the room here to my left? Will the brethren get ready for baptism? Some of the minister brothers here, something else. Step in the room with them. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There was never a person in all the Bible, not one person was ever baptized in the Bible in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in that title. No person was ever baptized in the church in history for the first 300 years this side. Everyone was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ until the Nicaea Council at Nicaea, Rome, where the Roman Catholic Church was organized, then they substituted the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. If there's a historian, a minister, any other person on air in paint that can produce one scripture or one speck of history where anybody was ever baptized any other way, then in the name of Jesus Christ to the Roman Catholic Church at Nicaea, Rome, you're duty-bound to bring it to me. Let me apologize. There's no such thing. No, and every person that was baptized by mercy that was not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ was commanded before they could enter glory to come back and be rebaptized again. Now, it's up to you. There's no scripture in the Bible where any persons was ever baptized using the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Amen. as the people baptized today. It's a Catholic, Roman Catholic creed that was handed down through Martin Luther and John Wesley kept running on, and the Bible predicts it would be that way and would run out in the last days and the door would be open as we just went through the church ages to see it. It's up to you. I'm just a messenger of the message. Once again, let's believe it. The doors are open, the baptistry's full, and there's no reason. There's robes ready, and we'll be ready to baptize in the next few minutes. If you're here and have not been baptized, once more, let us sing and come, won't you? Fulfill. You say, I intend to do that someday, Brother Brown. That someday may meet you like it did Brother Wade this morning, but maybe not the grace to follow it. You may go any minute. Whether you're young, if you live through the night, you'll, if you're 70 years old, you'll outlive many 10-year-old and 15, 30-year-old people. Thousands of them die through the night. That's right. You don't know when you're going. Be sure. Don't take a chance on that. Just remember, you can take a chance on your work or take a chance on this, but don't you take a chance on that. You remember, my voice will be a witness on God's magnet tape at the day of the judgment against the so now think of it as we sing again with our heads bowed. Amen. 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 Amen.